Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today we're taking a look at the Pathfinder Kingmaker Beta that's currently under development by Owlcat Games. Now, we've got a lot of content to cover, so we'll be diving in in just a moment. But before we get started, I should remind you this is just an unfinished beta, so don't be surprised if you see some weird behavior. The current version of the beta has a lot of balancing issues, incomplete features, and outright bugs, but a lot of that should improve as new beta builds are released. It's also important to note that the current beta includes the prologue and the entire first act of the game, so there are going to be story spoilers. That said, let's get started. Obviously, the first step is to make our character. We could keep this simple and go with one of the pre-made characters, but I think it's more fun to make our own. Of course, it's also important to note that because Kingmaker uses a modified version of the Pathfinder rule system, there are literally hundreds of rules covering the character creation process. If I tried to explain everything that we came across, we'd be here all day, so instead we'll try to make this relatively quick. I've already got a pretty good idea of what kind of character I want to build, so we should be done in about 10 minutes. We've already picked our character portrait, so now we need to pick our character race. There are currently seven races to choose from, and if you're familiar with D&D or Pathfinder, then these options should all look pretty familiar to you. Every race comes with its own set of special advantages and disadvantages based on the lore surrounding it. That means it's important to choose a race that fits with the character concept you have in mind. In my case, we're going with a human, because we're really going to need that extra versatility. This is also where you choose your gender and handedness, but that's mostly just cosmetic. Let's try to make him look a little more like our portrait. I'm sure there will be more cosmetic options in the final game, but this is fine for now. Now it's time to make our next big decision. We need to choose our character class. Again, if you're familiar with D&D or Pathfinder, you should recognize most of these options. But one of the big differences you might not be expecting is that thanks to a stretch goal, every class has three separate archetypes to choose from. Each one of these archetypes significantly alters the way the class plays, changing its role on the battlefield. In this case, if the player just wants to play a normal fighter, then they can pick that as their preferred archetype. But the player can also choose the Aldari Defender or the Tower Shield Specialist archetypes, each of which offer their own special assortment of passive and active abilities that cater to a significantly different playstyle. In this case, we'll be going with the Inquisitor class. They're essentially a cross between the Cleric and the Paladin class, but with spontaneous casting ability similar to a Sorcerer. Their biggest gimmick is the ability to use Divine Judgments, which allow them to buff allies and debuff opponents at the beginning of combat. As they gain levels, they gain access to more powerful Judgments, as well as a small assortment of additional divine abilities that help them more efficiently slaughter foes and work with allies. All things considered, they're actually a pretty solid class. But I've already got my eye on the Monster Tactician archetype. This archetype significantly changes the Inquisitor, completely removing their ability to make divine judgments. Instead, they gain a special version of the Summon Monster ability, which lasts about 10 times longer than the normal spell. This provides them with a reliable source of instant reinforcements in any fight. They also gain access to a small number of the Inquisitor's other basic abilities, which grant them a small amount of combat bonuses when working with allies, or with the monsters that they summon. Anyway, now that we've selected our class, let's move on. Because we chose a class with divine abilities, we have to choose the deity we worship and our domain of influence. Now, I'm more of a D&D guy, so I'm not really familiar with the Pathfinder Pantheon, but I was immediately drawn to Caden Kalian. They give you pages of information here, but the Cliffsnote version is he's basically the god of adventurers. 
He's a former mercenary who ascended to godhood as the result of a drunken dare, and his newfound divinity didn't really change the way he does things. He wants his followers to be brave and to fight for just causes, but he also wants them to make time for drunken antics and good-spirited brawling. He's pretty laid back as far as gods go. The only thing he really seems to frown on is being an evil jerk. Since I generally end up playing selfish but well-meaning characters, he's pretty much a perfect fit. Now that we've chosen our god, we need to choose our domain of influence. In this case, Caden gives us access to the domains of chaos and good. Since I'm assuming that the majority of the enemies we're going to fight will be evil, we'll pick the good domain. Let's move on. Now it's time to assign our ability and skill points. Again, if you've played the tabletop game, this should look pretty familiar. We've got 25 points to divide into our attributes, but this is a weighted system. The higher the attribute goes, the more expensive it is to continue raising it. Our most important attribute is Wisdom, and we do have enough points to raise it up to our racial maximum, which is 18. That would give us a plus 4 to all Wisdom-related actions, but it would also end up using almost all of our ability points. Since we've got 5 other abilities we need to put points into, it's probably better if we take a more tempered approach. First we'll bump our Wisdom down to 16, then we'll choose Wisdom as the racial bonus we get for being human. That way we still get a plus 4 ability bonus, but we also freed up several ability points that we can now put into our other abilities. We could use that racial bonus to boost our wisdom all the way up to 20, but then we'd be right back where we started. I think we'll boost some of our other abilities instead. We'll start by dropping a few points into Charisma. It won't really help us in combat, but it will help us when we're dealing with NPCs. That leaves us with 10 more points to play with, so we'll be putting two of those points into Intelligence. Again, it's not going to help us in combat, but it will give us an extra skill point to play with. Before we go any further, it is important to note that this is a section where the game diverges from the tabletop rules. The original tabletop game offers a lot more skills than they could put into the video game adaptation, so the developers have effectively cut the number of skill points you get in half. Normally you would get an extra skill point for every two points you put into intelligence, but in this case you essentially get half a skill point rounded up. That means with 12 in intelligence, I'll essentially be getting one extra skill point every odd numbered level, starting at level 1. It's tempting to put more points into intelligence, but we really need to save some for our combat abilities. Let's go ahead and sprinkle two points into each of our other attributes. We won't be an unstoppable juggernaut, but it should make us pretty well-rounded in a fight. Of course, now we're faced with a different problem. We only have two ability points left to play with, and that's not enough to raise an attribute from 12 to 14. This is a good time to mention that Pathfinder Kingmaker also has an encumbrance and fatigue system. It's a relatively new mechanic that the developers just added to the game, so it's not shown in the current description for strength. Under the current system, it's incredibly easy for your characters to become over-encumbered, which cripples you in combat. That gives us a pretty good reason to bump our strength up to 13. That just leaves us with one more ability point, and it's a toss-up between Dexterity and Constitution. Putting that point into Constitution would let us travel further on the world map, but I think we're better off putting it into Dexterity. That gives us access to a few extra feats. Okay, I think that's everything, so let's move on. Wait, why isn't it... Oh, right. I totally forgot about skills. Okay, well, there are 11 skills and we only have 5 skill points to play with. The stars indicate which skills your class is proficient with, but in our case, because we're an Inquisitor, we're proficient with all skills. That will give us a significant bonus to any skill that we decide to put skill points into. Every skill is also linked to one of your abilities, so the higher that ability, the better you are at that skill. It's important to take all of your modifiers into account when you're choosing your skills. We're going to be running around with medium armor and a shield, which will apply severe penalties to our physical skills. That means we're probably better off focusing on mental skills instead, especially the ones that rely on wisdom or charisma. It's also important to remember that you're going to be traveling with a party of adventurers. They can help you with any skills you decide not to take. Okay, now we're ready to move on which means it's time to pick our character's starting feats. 
While Pathfinder Kingmaker doesn't have all the feats from the original tabletop game, it does still present the player with a huge amount of options, so this can easily end up being one of the most time-consuming parts of the character creation process. Now, there are dozens of viable builds that we could use for this character, but since our main class feature revolves around magically summoning monsters, that gives me a pretty good idea of what we should take. First, we need to grab the Spell Focus feat, with the specialization in Conjuring. That does make it harder for enemies to resist our Conjuration spells, but it doesn't really help our summoning spells. It does, however, act as a prerequisite for the feat that we really want, Augment Summoning. This feat is perfect for the Monster Tactician. It grants a significant physical bonus to any monsters that we summon, making them much more effective in combat. That's why I chose to play a human character. We needed two feat slots to start with Augment Summon. Moving on, we're almost done. Now we just need to select our starting spells. Normally, a cleric would have access to all of the spells that his god had to offer, he would just have to pray for them in advance. In our case, the Inquisitor uses spontaneous casting, like a sorcerer. It makes him more flexible on the battlefield, but also severely limits his selection. We need healing spells, so we're definitely taking Cure Light Wounds. That just leaves us with one more slot, so we'll take a nice, basic support spell. We'll grab Bless, which gives a small combat bonus to all nearby allies. Now we're on the home stretch. We just need to personalize our character by picking our voice, name, and alignment. I'll take care of it. A mere flesh wound. Their life ends here. Hmm. Not bad, but a bit generic. Forwards! No, no, backwards. B backwards! Get it off me. Burn! Slice! Behead! Okay, well, that's clearly just Deadpool. It's pretty entertaining, but not what I'm looking for. Not for this character, anyway. Let us press on. Our time has come. Defeat is not an option. A bit too boring. What's next? Let us be off. Forwards! I won't give up! Hmm. This is my path. That's actually pretty promising. A solid plan. Enemy near. I feel faint. The path is clear. Okay, if I were making a rogue or a wizard, I'd definitely go with the reserved voice pack. But since we're an Inquisitor of Caden, I think we have to go with the brave voice pack. I can work with that. We do have the ability to set our date of birth, but I don't think it actually makes a difference in the current beta. We'll just ignore it for now. And that brings us to the final step, the alignment wheel. Your alignment can end up affecting the way that certain NPCs react to you, and certain spells or magic items will only work for or on characters of certain alignments. It's also meant to serve as a general guideline for how your character should interact with others, and the game will actually keep track of those interactions. If you consistently make decisions that don't match your alignment, then your alignment will slowly change until it better matches those decisions. In our case, it's not much of a choice. We worship Caden, the god of bravery, and his preferred alignment is chaotic good. We do have a little wiggle room, but it's best to play it safe. That brings us to the final step of the character creation process, where we get to review our finished character sheet. Now, I'm sure there are ways we could go back and improve our character, but for the purposes of the beta, we should be fine. Let's get started. Where are they? This is taking forever. They didn't even say what this was for, just that the Aldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Aldori anyway? Rich folk? 
If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Aldori Sword Lords run the premier school for the dueling arts. They're also the richest and most influential people in this part of Bravoy. Take that tone with them and they'll teach you some manners pretty quickly. Alright, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. Hush, quiet, they're coming. Greetings, everyone. I am Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori, and this is Lord Mayor Yosef Salinius of Restov. Welcome to my mansion. The mayor, a middle-aged man with bushy sideburns and a monocle, wears a beaming smile. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task, and I see true heroes before me. Strong and fearless, exactly what Restov needs. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, to the point. South of here, just beyond Bravois' border, lies a region known as the Stolen Lands. This is disputed territory, and while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the Stolen Lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, none of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restov would be the first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state, as well as the noble title of its founder. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands, and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head, and you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? There's a whole team of us. Who exactly will receive the Baron's title? I will, of course. I'm the leader of this team, after all. Don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help me. We haven't yet begun, and you already speak of divvying rewards. What makes you think we'll even succeed? There's little point arguing over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. Jamandi clears her throat loudly, interrupting the argument. If I may please answer the question. She takes a long pause, waiting for the voices to die down as everyone directs their attention toward her. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. Why not just recognize this stag lord as Baron? That's a good point. As I see it, the Stag Lord already holds power over the region with confidence. Many noble bloodlines were started by bandits who just got lucky, weren't they? The Sword Lord's gaze is chilling as she responds. Perhaps because we do have standards to maintain. This room has seen many celebrations of adventurers, and even those who just got lucky. But giving a noble title to a bandit lord, that's one thing that's never happened here, and it won't while I still breathe. You're helping us found a barony? What do you gain from such generosity? Don't ask stupid questions. Why should you even care? What they have to gain and why, that's for Lady Aldori and I to discuss. It's none of your concern. Your only concern is to swing your sword around, or whatever it is you do. Of course, we stand to benefit from this enterprise, but if you're concerned that we intend to rule your country from afar using you as a front, please know that these concerns are unfounded. Let's just say that we have a strong interest in the region's stability. We have need of a ruling power we can negotiate with, not bandit gangs and monster hordes. What rewards can we expect exactly? The Lord Mayor's eyebrows rise so far he almost drops his monocle. And what reward would you seek beyond a noble title and your own lands? We'll absorb the cost of preparing and equipping your expeditions. Once you return victorious, Restov will also allocate you a significant sum to provide financial support for you to establish your country. Essentially, we'll help you build your capital. I hope such a reward is satisfactory. Words, words, words. Significant. Financial. I can't fill my belly with pretty words. 
Jamandi smiles. Of course, there will also be an official banquet held in your honor. All of Restov's high society will gather to celebrate your feat. Now you're talking. It's clear as day. Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better, or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find that we've already prepared supplies for you there, and thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. I wish you luck. Thank you again with all my heart for replying to this call. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage, the unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restov, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go, and return in triumph. Hi, my name's Lindsay. I'm a bard, though this is my first real adventure. So, shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? We sure will. Just wait, we've plenty of great feats in store. I have no doubt. Kind of related, I wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about this Tartuccio fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious personally. He appointed himself head of the team and he's just after the Baron's crown. Or whatever it is Baron's wear. Doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This, Lindsay blushes a little. This is the person I'll write my book about. Wait, a book? Damn, I should have led with this. Please, just let me explain. You know what the trouble with most heroes' biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from the outside. Worst case, someone heard about it from their brother who heard about it from their friend who heard it from their cousin and so on, adding a new batch of lies each time. Every time I read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard along with them to write it all down properly? And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are with a heroic journey lying before us. Who's going to be the hero? Some dwarf who keeps muttering about how we'll all die? Or maybe that horrific scythe lady? Or, gods forbid, Tartuccio? No way! Not a bad plan. It's settled then. I'll accomplish the feats and you'll write them down. Deal. Alright, I'm going to my room to write about tonight. See you in the morning. The first step on the road to glory. Leave the hall. And we're finally ready to begin adventuring. At its core, Kingmaker is a fairly standard isometric RPG, inspired by games like Baldur's Gate and the more recent Pillars of Eternity, though it is the first one to use the Pathfinder rule system. How's it going, Tartuccio? Tomorrow our glorious journey begins. Are you ready? I hope so. I don't need layabouts on my team. Fantastic. How about you, Amiri? Finally, the idol talk's over. I can't wait to set out. You and me both. Jathal. What game is Jamandi playing? I'm not used to feeling like a pawn. I'm sure it's fine. You're probably just imagining things. What do you think, Harem? This expedition is surely doomed. That's the spirit. Well, you guys have been great, but I think I've had about enough mingling for one night. It is done. Let's head back to our room. Oh, but first, let's rearrange our special abilities. Like many other role-playing games, Kingmaker uses a hotbar to help keep track of your spells, special abilities, and quick-use items. You can see all of your currently available abilities by clicking on the tabs on top of the hotbar. Then you can rearrange them with a simple drag-and-drop interface. In this case, I'm putting my buffs and healing spells on the left, my monster summoning abilities in the middle, and my weapon-related abilities on the right. It also looks like we started with one item equipped on our belt. I'll unequip it for now. Let's see what else we've got while we're here. 
Okay, we've currently got two weapon sets equipped. A longbow and a short spear and shield. We're not really designed for ranged combat, so we'll go ahead and equip the melee set now. We also started with a basic set of medium armor. It grants a plus 5 bonus to our armor class, but also imposes a minus 4 penalty to certain skills. That's why we didn't bother putting points into skills like mobility or stealth. Those skills are generally better suited for characters that won't be wearing medium or heavy armor. Anyway, let's head to our room and get some rest. Lindsay bursts into your room. She looks scared. Her face is smeared with soot, and she holds a weapon in her hands. Help! Help! What's going on? The mansion's under attack. We need to help. Some villains broke in and started killing everyone. I barely made it. Hurry, we have to help the guards fight off the attackers, or we'll all be cut down one by one. As if to lend credence to Lindsay's words, a scream echoes from the hallway. You're not going anywhere. Now, obviously, this is our first basic tutorial fight. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to look at the tutorial, but otherwise, we'll be jumping right in. Kingmaker uses a real-time with pause combat system, but it also uses an adapted version of the rules for the Pathfinder tabletop RPG. This means that combat in Kingmaker tends to be both fast-paced and exceedingly deadly. Now that we've slain our first assassin, we can collect the spoils of our victory. Unlike some games, upon killing an enemy, they drop everything they were carrying. This means that the player will have access to a massive amount of loot and salvage as they progress through the game. But it's also important to know that Kingmaker has a rather harsh encumbrance system. Much like in the tabletop game it's based on, Pathfinder Kingmaker uses a tiered encumbrance system. Items that are carried in your shared stash go towards the party encumbrance limit, while items that are equipped go towards a character's personal encumbrance. In this case, our Inquisitor has a 13 strength, which means his encumbrance thresholds are set in increments of 50. He has 42 pounds worth of weapons and armor equipped at the moment, which means he's only lightly encumbered. But if he exceeds the 50 or 100 pound mark, then his mobility will be dramatically reduced, both in tactical combat and when moving between locations on the world map. The same general rules also apply to the overall party encumbrance, except it's based on the entire party's collective strength and the thresholds are doubled. Let's move on. Hey, it's Lindsay. Thanks a lot for your help back there. It's not like someone tried to stab me or something. Well, at the very least, Lindsay was kind enough to update our journal. Because Lindsay declares herself to be your biographer, whether you like it or not, the entire quest journal is presented from her point of view. This might actually be one of my favorite things in the current beta. It's certainly not the first time this has been done in a role-playing game, but it's still an enjoyable twist. Now, Lindsay ran off to the left. But before we join her, let's head off to the right and grab some extra loot. It's not like this poor guy is going to need it. That didn't really give us anything we can use at the moment, but it will get us some extra coin later. Obviously, Lindsay is leading us into our second fight, which means my adventurer instincts are pointing me in the other direction. There are events in the beta that are time-sensitive, but this isn't one of them. Nothing here, so let's head back. It is done! They got someone. We have to help. Look, they're running. Get them. And what shall I do with this one? We'll finish him later. He won't get away. 
Thanks, Tartuccio. Good to see you, too. Though this does give us a chance to try our new summoning abilities. Okay, we're all set. Let's get this started. Wait. That should have summoned a glorious death pony to gracefully beat my foes to death with its dainty hooves. Well, that's pretty disappointing, but... Oh. Okay. Uh, just a reminder, this is a beta, and it does still seem to be attacking. You're just in time. A bit longer and I'd have been... Ugh, I don't even want to think about it. Can you imagine what a terrible loss that would have been? But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound, and unscathed, ready to lead you to victory. Lady Jamandi's holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one she had us gathered in before. We need to make our way to her, and along the way we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the stolen lands. Speaking of dummies, the gnome looks back at Lindsay and starts whispering as he takes a ring off his finger, handing it to you. Take this ring, quiet now, so that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. Well, Tartuccio may have an attitude problem, but I'm certainly not going to turn down a free ring of protection. Let's go ahead and get that equipped. Of course, Tartuccio probably has an ulterior motive for giving this to us, but we'll worry about that later. For now, the important thing is it boosts our armor class to a respectable 18. Tartuccio has also temporarily joined our party. He's got access to some pretty useful spells, but he's also very fragile. We'll use the manual formation system to tuck him safely behind Retcon, though we do seem to have an extra token here. I guess one of those tokens must be the Celestial Pony we summoned. Hmm. Well, we'll just ignore it for now and get the rest of our party in order. Okay, I think we're ready to move on. Farewell, glorious death pony. The door is blocked from the other side. Alright, guess we'll take the scenic route. There are at least three enemies this time, so let's try that summoning spell again. We will be victorious. I think our pony ended up on the roof again, so let's take a look at our other options. This is my path. Like a lot of other party-based RPGs, Kingmaker does have an AI system for players who don't like micromanaging their party during combat. I'll probably end up using that pretty heavily during this playthrough. Yep, there's our horse. Doesn't look like it can reach anyone this time. Well, horse aside, that actually went pretty smoothly. Of course, we've been lucky so far. You're playing by the same rules that the bad guys are, so the game can be exceedingly deadly if the dice turn against you. Of course, for players who prefer a more casual experience, there are adjustable difficulty settings. There we go. As you can see, there are four variable difficulty settings, with a few other options to help you customize your play experience. 
The default setting for the game actually uses the adapted rule set, which is a bit on the easier side. For the purposes of this playthrough, I bumped it up to standard rules instead. That means that enemies can get critical hits, and if any of our party members take too much damage, they'll actually die. If I were really a glutton for punishment, I could bump it all the way up to advanced rules, but that's a bit too much for me. There's only so many times you can watch your character get gibbed by an enemy crit before it stops being fun. One thing that's definitely lacking from the current combat menu is a comprehensive list of auto-pause options. Hopefully they'll add a few more of those in before the game hits final release. We just found our first healing potions. Those will definitely come in handy. In fact, let's go ahead and equip some on our belt slots, though we do still need to be careful about our encumbrance. At the moment, potions are actually pretty cumbersome. They can't be stacked and they weigh one pound apiece. That's something that might end up changing later in the beta. We'll give Lindsay some potions as well, and, uh... Hmm. I think we'll just take those. We certainly don't want Tartuccio straining himself. Okay, we're ready to move on. So long, Death Pony. Oh no, is everyone dead? Pathetic. Can't even defend themselves, but ambitious enough to try conquering the stolen lands. Tartuccio, you may be laying it on a bit thick there. In fact, let's check something real quick. Chaotic evil. That explains a few things. We'll deal with that later. Let's keep moving. There's some general loot. We'll just, uh, help ourselves to those. To keep them safe, of course. There we go. Now this ring is extra safe. Onwards. Looks like we've just walked into a fight in progress. It's the end for you rats! Honestly, Amiri can probably handle this herself, but I tire of waiting. we'll see what we can do to help. I'll make my own legend. Can you make an epic pose? I need inspiration. The barbarian's face is distorted with rage. She grinds her teeth and sweat drips from her forehead. Noticing Tartuccio, she swings her sword but stops it just in time. Oh, it's you. Stay out from under my feet or I'll strike you down. Amiri takes a deep breath, then barks out, Blood for Gorum! Swinging her bloody sword, she runs toward the sound of battle. Barbarians. I think that's exactly how heroes should be. What, stupid, sweaty, and always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of? Calistria saved me from such heroes. Oh, Tartuccio, you scamp. Alright, let's loot these corpses and keep moving. Actually, before we get moving, let's take a quick look at our inventory. I couldn't help but notice we were moving a bit slowly during that last fight.
Our encumbrance values seem okay right now, but I'll definitely have to keep a close eye on things. Both Lindsay and Tartuccio have very low strength scores. March on. There they are, the assassins. This is your last chance to give up. Drop your weapons and we'll spare your lives. How generous. I'm afraid I can't offer you the same. Hey, ugly mug. Get them. What the hell is that? Well then. I'm starting to get a sneaking suspicion that we might be in over our heads here. But I guess that's half the fun. We're just past the 40 minute mark, so I think this makes for a good stopping point. I really need to run some tests on our monster summoning ability anyway, to make sure it'll work in future episodes. I'll create a hard save for the campaign, and we'll pick up here next time. Hey, Redcon Raider here. Hopefully this has been enough to give you a good general idea of what the Pathfinder Kingmaker beta currently has to offer. If you think it looks like the sort of game that you might enjoy, I encourage you to go check it out. You can find out more about Pathfinder Kingmaker by visiting the official website or the original crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter. As usual, links are in the description.